he has risen, he has risen indeed. Whenever you see this service, this is Josiah so Reform United Church of Christ online Easter service. I want to welcome you to join us in our Sunday morning services at 9 a.m. for Easter morning, if you can, followed by an Easter egg hunt. But just remember today is a day of celebration. He has risen, he has risen indeed. We will start with our call to worship. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the stone is cast aside and the mantle of darkness is cast away. God has swallowed up death forever and brushed the tears away from our faces. This is the day of salvation. So he is glad, so be glad and rejoice. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord of life has come to reign forever. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia, amen. And I'm going to read to you from some scriptures, which is the Passion reading, which we've read on Good Friday, but you'll understand later in my, my sermon why I'm using it today. From John 19, when the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with their undergarment remaining. The garment was seamless, woven in one place from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened to fulfill the scriptures that said, They divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. So this is what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, wife of Caiaphas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there whom the, and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that time on, the disciple took him into his home. Later, knowing that everything had been finished, and so that scriptures would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there and soaked in a sponge, and the sponge was put on a stalk of hayseed plant and lifted to Jesus' lips. And when he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished that he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. And from Luke 24, the Lord has risen and appeared to Simon. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, open us up through the hearing of these words and the moving of the Holy Spirit that we may come to love you with all our heart, with all our minds, with all our soul, and with all our strength. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm about 10 years old. My brother's about 13. He's my big brother. And I am sick and tired of him. I just can't stand him. And he's sick and tired of me. I don't want nothing to do with him. And my mother's sick and tired of both of us. And she looks at us and she says, Boys, I want you to go out and play together. And my brother says, I am not playing with that little stinker. And I said, I ain't playing with him. <laughs> and my mother says, Boys, do what I said and get out there and play. And we went outside and we got on our bicycles and pretty soon we were popping wheelies and we were leaving skid marks on the roads and, and we were unified. We were best buddies. We were back together. We had been torn apart, but we were back together. And we lived in a, a brand new neighborhood. And I'm going to blame it on my brother because he was the older brother. It probably was my idea, but he said, let's go look at a house. They were building houses of new construction and there wasn't any windows and doors on them so you could walk right in. And he said, well, let's go look at one. We knew we weren't supposed to be doing that. So we picked the biggest house, and we went down, and we walked in, and I can still remember going down to the basement and, and smelling that fresh smell of cement, and then walking upstairs and, and, and the upstairs seeing and smelling the smell of wood that was just cut. And then looking out the opening, because there was no windows, we saw this car come around the bend. Oh, no. It was the cops. Run! So we took off running. Nobody can catch a kid in their own neighborhood. It's not possible. We took off running. My big brother was way ahead of me. He jumped over this log, running up the hill. I jumped over the log, caught my foot, boom, flat on my face. I turned around and climbed under the log, and I peeked out from it and looked up, and there, standing with his hands on his hips, was a policeman. Come with me, son. So I went with him and he walked me through the house and down to the basement and upstairs and he said, 
have you done any damage? And I said, no, sir, we were just looking at the house. We didn't do any damage. And he said, oh, okay. And he said, well, before I let you go, he said, I need to know who that friend of yours was. And I said, I'm unified with my brother. I'm not giving you up. I said, Psst, I don't even just move to the neighborhood. I don't even know his name. And he said, oh, well, where does he live? I said, you know, I just ran into him while we were out here. I don't have a clue where he lives. Police officer looked at me and he said, Well, you see those two bikes down there on the hill? He said, Maybe I'll just confiscate them and take them back to the police station until they can be picked up. His name's Don Buckle. He's my brother, 1108 Enterline 42349393. I quickly gave my brother up. The police would let me go and told me that I was to talk with my brother and we were supposed to tell our parents that um, what had happened and where we were. And what, what went on. And me and my brother talked and we were unified once again. And we decided that, well, if the policeman called our parents, we were going to get in trouble. But if we told them, we were definitely going to get in trouble. So we decided not to tell them. And they didn't find out until we were adults. But isn't this the way relationships go? Isn't it broken sometimes and then other times it happens things like death and illness and accidents and troubles. And, and then we choose to mend the broken relationships when that happens. And maybe it happens the other way around. Maybe it happens we're separated by somebody we care about. We're separated by, usually by stubbornness or by our pride. I mean, isn't that what usually happens? And then when that happens and we let ourselves be separated, that's when we lose and evil truly wins. Now, our gospel lesson today in John addresses the brokenness of relationships. God's plan is being fulfilled on this Easter Sunday, and the old reality is done. God's new reality is in the risen, crucified Christ. Every event in the gospel is part of God's well-orchestrated plan. The people of God were always fighting amongst themselves like we're fighting amongst ourselves today. In churches, in families, wherever it is, we fight. My wife and I tutored Bosnian refugees many years ago and, and teaching them. I was kind of the comic relief and my wife was the tutor. But um, I, I will tell you, in their country, they could not be at peace because that one was one religion, one was another religion, and one was either hating where they lived or the other was hating where they lived. It didn't matter, so they had to move out of their country. But you know what? We're thinking a lot about war with the Ukraine and the war, and it's a terrible injustice, but it's probably not the worst injustice. The biggest injustice, I think, is the way that we treat our neighbors, the way that we treat our church members, the way that we treat our families. That's probably the biggest injustice. Is. And we can change this by doing things just a, a little bit differently. By doing things like holding this, this service of Christian love, this He is risen, He is risen indeed, this glorious Easter service, and loving one another. And as Christians daring to do the unthinkable, when the rest of the world is saying no, we say, yes, I'm going to choose to love that person. And perhaps only then will we be free from hate. Perhaps only then will we be free to enliven one another. Perhaps only then will the devil lose and we win. And yeah, I know, we don't talk about, say much about the devil. We don't talk about him, we just kind of say evil and, and we don't talk about him. But make no mistake, in our gospel lesson today, he's part of it. But the devil's not touchy-feely and we don't want to talk about it. So I want to say to you, think about it today, because today's the day. Remember that old song, Charlie Daniels, The Devil Went Down to Georgia? Well, here's my version. The devil went down to Jerusalem and he was looking for a soul to steal. He was in a bind and he was way behind and he was willing to make a deal. He came upon this young man named Jesus who said he was the son of God and the devil jumped upon a hickory stump and it went something like this. Hi folks, I'm the devil. I usually hide myself in a little more normal way so you don't really know who I am. You all know me though. I know you do. You've all met me many times, and, and I'm having a great day. Aren't you having a good day, folks? Let me tell you about my day. First of all, Judas, or did I? Jesus. Oh, sorry, most of you don't speak Greek. Jesus handed over Jesus. And then I had the religious leaders hand over Jesus. And finally, Pilate handed him over. And now we're waiting for him to die. Woohoo! That Jesus is nutty. 
He thought he could just beat me. Just beat me. Really? I guess I fixed his wagon. You see, he's the one in the middle. If you look over at the cross, he's the one in the middle with the sign over his head that says, King of the Jews in, in Greek and Hebrew and Latin. Boy, this is good news for me and for everyone. Now, now let's look and see what's going on. Look, the soldiers are dividing his clothes. Get the tunic, get the tunic. Wait, wait, the tunic, his robe is without seam. They're not ripping it. Oh, they're drawing lots for it. Wait a minute, oh no. That fulfills scripture. They divided my clothes among themselves, and my clothing, they cast lots. I don't like this. What's that you say? A lot of people think it's the symbol of single unity of the community of all believers. Well, I don't care. He'll be dead in a minute, and it won't matter. Oh, look, isn't it sweet? He's talking to his mommy. That's so sweet. What's that? He says, woman, here's your son. And he's saying something that's like, well, here's your mother. What's that about? You say it's the beginning of a new family of faith? The other disciples and sisters and brothers are members of Jesus' new family, and all believers are children of God? Well, I don't believe it. And Jesus is going to be dead in a minute, and then I'm going to be the one in charge. Now, what you say? I thirst. Oh, you thirst? Yeah, that's right. Give him some wine. Give him some sour wine. Here it comes. I can feel it. Soon he's going to be finished. What's that he's saying? Ketelosia. Well, wait a minute. That's not the word for finished. That's the word for it's completed. In Greek, that word means it's going to go on and on. I don't like this. God's plan is going to be completed and it's going to continue on. I don't like this. Finally, he's dropping his head. He's giving up the spirit. He's giving up the spirit. Oh no. He gave up the Holy Spirit. He's fulfilling God's plan. Jesus, you tricked me. I guess you fixed my wagon instead. He's risen. He's risen from the dead. Funny way of looking about the text, but it's quite true. The devil thought he had won, and instead it was you and it was me. We won. Because of Jesus' sacrifice, we can come here together as the body of Christ, loving and caring for one another. Oh, it's okay to say, I'm a Methodist, or I'm a Lutheran, or I'm a Catholic, or I'm whatever faith it is, but we have to continue to show each other this loving grace that Jesus showed for us. John's narrative of Jesus' death is of great significance to the church, of great significance to each and every one of us, because it traces the new community of Christ to the cross. But the cross now shows us God's design for the church and its defining mission, to love one another. And all through today's gospel lesson are words of unity, the unity of the believers of Christ. Our call, our mission, your call, my call, no matter where we come from, is to remember that Jesus sent his Holy Spirit with his dying breath so that we could be united as believers, loving one another, and going out and sharing that gospel lesson with all the world, all the world, so that we could be a new loving and caring family in Jesus the Christ. A family united, a family forgiven through the death of Jesus Christ our Lord. Remember today, he is risen, he is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, you are risen indeed and we celebrate your glorious resurrection this day, the holiest of holy days. Easter Sunday. Lord, we pray for those people that we've been rude and mean and nasty to. Open our hearts with the love of Christ so that we may reach out and love them again. Let us love our families, our neighbors, our friends, and even those we do not love. Give us the strength of your Holy Spirit, Lord. Lord, we pray this and whatever else we hold in our hearts and our minds as we pray the prayer that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. He is risen, he is risen indeed. Please guide
desire has for the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord guide you out with the strength of the risen Christ, loving everyone that you come in contact with. And may this holiest of holy days be filled with peace that passes all understanding, the peace that comes through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed.